Well, welcome to the next episode in our Choose Growth series. I'm here with Naomi Simpson, and today we're going to talk about cash flow. We're to- I like talking about money. <laughs> <laughs> well, me too. So um, let's start by what is cash flow? Yeah, look, sometimes we think if we buy a product and we sell a product and there's the margin in between, which we call profit, then all is going to be great in business. But cash flow is really how money travels through a business rather than just in and out. It's not the two points, it's the journey that money goes on. So many businesses have to buy in advance, whatever it is, whether it's a a component, whether it's a finished product, whether they're importers. And the terms of that supply, so when you have to pay for it is what I mean by terms, is really important. And we did see uh, prior to 2020 really some unrealistic terms where you were buying things offshore, you were paying 50% at the placement of the order and another 50% when it got to the docks in that country that it was exiting. And that means that all of your cash is held up in stock or components. And yet when selling as a, uh, a supplier to large retailers, they were not paying until 90 days afterwards. So therefore your cash can literally be gone for 180 days. And that's a struggle for any small business. Now there's been changes in legislation so that any small business can talk to larger enterprises and say 14 days. But even if you're a, doesn't matter what business you're in, understanding how the cash flows through your business is really, really important. And even if you're, let's say, a contractor or a micro business, or if you are waiting and you always feel you're waiting and you're anxious, you must look at your business model. Could you get 50% in advance? Could clients pay in advance? Because I always say small business is not a bank. It's not a bank. And we should not be funding large enterprise. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So I understand when you're purchasing from somebody, a deposit makes sense because they don't want to, you know, tool up and do all of those sorts of things. But 100% before you've even checked the quality of the product, I think that they, that we need to keep a real eye on the flow and therefore the terms of how you're doing business. Yeah. And we've talked about cash flow for small businesses quite a bit now. Um, So why do you think that small businesses still don't prioritise that in their thinking? Well, they believe that if they've made the sale, the money will come. But it's not a sale until the money's in the bank. And, uh, um, you know, and if that is 90 days, that's 90 days that you don't have access to using that money to either buy more. So it actually in- inhibits your, your growth. And when you're looking at investing, or when I look at investing in a business, you don't kind of think you want to spend all of your capital or your money just on this, what we call working capital, which is the money you need to operate the business. You, you want to be investing in a business in their, um, in their growth elements. So the things that, you know, if they put in a new system, if they put in a new website, you know that it will drive growth and, it, and you'll get a return on that asset. There's no real return that you can get on working capital apart from I spent a dollar, I'm going to make $2, so therefore I've got 50%. But you can't work that asset, that capital investment, to actually grow more. It's, it's really about um, the flow. Right. And as businesses are scaling globally, that adds another dimension, right, with the currencies and so on. Oh, my gosh. It's so bad. And any time I'm working with a Shark Tank business, and and even actually some of the suppliers at Big Red Group, I mean, they're invoicing us in US dollars. So, you know, that's just... And so then you've got the double whammy of currency, and you can actually lose more in the deal on the currency transaction than you even made in terms of margin. And so, and people often don't look at that. They think, okay, they're not thinking, well, we made the agreement at this rate and now by the time I transfer it. So, you know, obviously if you can hold currency in, a, in, a, in that currency because there's other expenses going on, why not just hold it there instead of bringing it back and actually um, having to make a decision about what currency prices are going to do. So you can, it can be really challenging for us. And of course, which small business is an expert in that apart from the people who work in <laughs> funds transfers? Yeah. So I'm a small business. I'm growing really fast. I've invested in my in my product and it's uh, getting really popular. Suddenly Kim Kardashian's wearing my product or whatever it is in the US. And I'm growing quickly. Do I really care about the currency piece? Do I just want to sell more anyway? Every dollar counts. 
yeah. every single dollar. And um, back in the day, I didn't realise that the impact of just a few points margin. So let's say you're turning over ten thousand dollars and you're giving up one percent. You think, oh, okay, it's not so much. But when you're turning over a hundred million, one percent is a lot of money. Um, so you're better off getting the fundamentals right in your business and in understanding. And you know some of these big um, retailers, and I know for a fact working with my Shark Tank businesses, what they're doing is effectively factoring their own invoices and saying, "Oh, we'll pay you sooner, but we require a discount." I'm just like, really? You know, it's so hard. There's so many upfront costs when it comes to starting a business, and they need to be amateurized over a period of time. But especially if you're in manufacturing. Um, and I really encourage uh, people to begin to look at other options. It doesn't have to be produced offshore. In fact, one business that I'm working for has found incredible supply out of New Zealand, very cost effectively, and they'd never even considered it before. So um, it, it's challenging, but if you think that every dollar is precious um, and you want every dollar to work for you, then absolutely, because... It might only seem like a dollar at that time, but by the time you scale your business, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that you are that you can't employ somebody, that you're not spending on your marketing. It's so absolutely every dollar is precious. All right. So, you know, I'm working hard on my business. You know, I'm investing all of my time in there. I'm working in the business. What's your, what's your tip to pull out from that and work on the business, which is effectively what, what you're talking about. Is that right? Yeah, it is. It's often very hard when you get to the end of the day and you're so exhausted. You kind of go, oh, my goodness, I survived another day. Um, and it depends where you're up to on your business journey. You know, it, you get to the point where you kind of think, oh, can't somebody else do this? So you're thinking about what do I love in my business and what do I loathe in my business? And who should I employ? And if there's a whole bunch of things, like let's say chasing debtors, there's got to be a better way. That's not people's favourite job. So who else could do that? How else could you do that? And I think it's really important to see. I always think if I'm doing the same thing over and over over again, isn't there a system or a process that can do that for me? That's what technology is for. What are my special gifts to give to this business? It's my intelligence, my creativity, my voice, my storytelling. So you've got to always think about where are your best talents used? Could a systems, a process, or could it be outsourced? You know, so... And, and to take the time to do that. But if you're doing the same thing day in, day out, and you can't ever get on the front foot, time to breathe, time to rest, time to go walk and have a big, hard chat with yourself and say, right, I need some other insight. I need to do some reading. I need to talk to other business owners. I need to find out how I get out of this treadmill. Right. And who should they speak to other than yourself, of course? <laughs> Apart from reading my blog and listening to my podcast. Um, look, I, th I always think friends and family are not who I would go to looking for business advice because they'll, they might feel sorry for you. And also, as your family, if you're the income provider, they might begin to feel unsafe. So you're looking for peers. And there is a lot of business uh, um, groups and associations. The government's got all sorts of them. Um, and find your tribe, whether it be a, a professional association or whether it be um, a local business networking, it depends where you are, but find your tribe. There's an online digital um, networking group, which I've been a part of for years and years and years. We get together for a meal, you know, once a quarter, and we, we talk things through. So do find your tribe. It's really, really important. And there's others going through this journey as well. Might be online, you know, but, but also right. make sure they're not feeding you a wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh now I'm just making it sound like it's hard work but you know make sure that that person is speaking from experience and they've been there and done that everybody wants to tell you how to run your business but you know it's very easy to tell you how to run your business but have they done it before and how do they know do check and verify yeah I find that small businesses will look to not spend or invest in areas that will help them save money um, but will not worry about the money that's already being spent. So how can a small business prioritise where they invest and where they spend their cash? Oh, look, I'm by nature stingy. Um, and I always used to see, because our scoreboard was always about the number of people that we were serving, um, and it still is a big red group, you know, it's about the velocity, the number of people that we're serving. But what I always thought is, oh, my goodness, if I spend this amount of money here, if I spend $1,000, then... 
I've got to make $10,000. And when you realize that, you go, finding $10,000 is really hard. You know, how many customers is that? So, um, but then on the other hand of that, you, therefore you can be, you know, penny rich and pound poor because you do need to invest in systems and processes. Otherwise, you're never going to scale your business, ever. You cannot do it all. You know, there's not many billion-dollar enterprises run by one person. So, so really, you've got to think about, is this an asset that I'm buying that is going to save time, energy, money, and actually increase my professionalism and, and, and not necessarily give me more time, but definitely more bandwidth? Right, OK. So sounds like looking after your cash is actually costing cash. So mm -hmm. what's the, what would you say your top two or three priorities for someone who's now going to go and do something? Um, the top priorities is first of all, understand where your strengths lie and that given that we've all only been given 24 hours in a day and you would like to spend them. I mean, I often say, you know, who owns your business? Do you own the business or does it own you? And if it owns you, it's really time to have a talk to yourself. So work out the best value that you deliver. Thinking through the love loathe list of what do I hate doing and is there a systems process or another person or an outsource service that can do that? Um, and also know your cash. Like don't just say, oh, my accountant does it. Like I've heard that a little too often. It's not half to go and get some education around cash. I, I mean, I feel fortunate because I, you know, Bachelor of Commerce and there was accounting component so I understand how cash works but if you don't go and do a course there's many of them and understand how cash works uh, and don't don't be afraid to talk about it like money's okay you know when we're successful in business you know you can't change the world unless you've got the means you've got to be able to make money that's how we employ people that's how we grow it's how we've got a, a thriving economy <laughs> and just finally how can air wallets help well Air wallets, I, I weren't you around 20 years ago, but if I think about the time that it takes in terms of the number of suppliers and the different sorts of business that we do. So again, if you're only doing one or two, but if you want to scale a business and do hundreds of thousands of transactions, you need somebody to partner with and you need somebody who really kind of gets small business. And also you've got to know what it's going to cost. You know, it's not that, oh, well, we're going to take a percentage of this and a percentage of that. And you don't want this incremental creep. Often there's hidden fees on everything and you never know the next hidden fee and the next. So if the one thing I request of Airwall is be completely transparent. Just tell people because then they can plan. You've got to know what I'm spending and where those costs are. Hidden costs. It's like, oh, I thought I made 100 bucks, and by the time I got it in my bank account, it was 87. What happened? Right, yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Amy. My pleasure, Peter.